Hello, my name is Marshall Goldsmith. Last year was a great year for me. I had the privilege of going to London and at the Thinkers 50 ceremony was ranked as the number one most influential leadership thinker in the world and the number one executive coach in the world. It was also a great year because my new book, Triggers, was ranked number one in the Wall Street Journal as best-selling business book, number one in the New York Times. So a fantastic year. What do I do? I travel all around the world, been to 95 countries, over 12 million frequent flyer miles, just on American Airlines. My mission is to help successful leaders achieve positive long-term change in behavior for themselves, for their people, and for their teams. My coaching clients include oh, many of the most distinguished leaders in the world, CEOs of huge organizations like the CEO of Ford and Pfizer, Glaxo, the Walmart, the president of the World Bank, the head of the Mayo Clinic, wonderful, wonderful people. And then I write and edit books and articles. My three huge selling books are Mojo, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, and Triggers. I would love for you to join me on social media. Join me on Facebook, join me on Twitter, Join me on LinkedIn. Join me on YouTube. On YouTube, I have over 100 videos online, and I'm very excited to be introducing my new website, www.marshallgoldsmith.com. Hundreds of videos, articles, blogs, all kinds of useful information that you can take back to use. Help you be a better leader, a better coach, help you in your business life, help you in your personal life as well. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much, Marshall. Thank you so, so much for having you on the Performance Tools uh, live show uh, today. Thank you so, so much. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, oh, so let me quickly. Thank you so me, much for inviting me. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, um, viewers, wherever you may be, please let's know where you're watching from. I have uh, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith with me here today. Uh, Dr. Marshall is the world authority in helping successful leaders achieve positive lasting change in behavior for themselves, their people, and their teams. Uh, Marshall is recognized as the number one leadership thinker and the number one executive coach in the world. He has worked as an executive coach to many of the greatest leaders in the world. I mean, leaders like Dim, uh, Dr. Jim Kim, Alan Mulali, Hubert Jolly, a, a whole, among several others. Uh, he has written quite a number of books, um, including the New York Times bestseller, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. Marshall, thank you so much for, um, for honoring my invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much mm. for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, just for our listeners, like I said, wherever you may be, please let's know. Uh, I'm streaming live from Lagos, Nigeria. And this is 3 p.m. Um, in Lagos, Nigeria. So <clears throat> we're going to draw a lot of lessons from uh, Marshall's work, uh, what he has done for almost uh, four decades now. I mean, so it's like uh, it's like paying for, it's like having a coaching session for free for the next one hour. <laughs> okay, so, so Marshall, please tell us a little bit uh, more about, about you. Well, you know, I'm from a small town called Valley Station, Kentucky. I went to school in Indiana. I got a PhD at UCLA and I was a college professor and dean while I was very, very young. I met a very famous man named Dr. Paul Hersey who was kind enough to teach me what he did. And uh, then after that, as you mentioned, I had the privilege of traveling all around the world speaking and teaching, which I love doing. And then what I love about my coaching is not what I teach them, it's what I learned from them. I've learned so much from my coaching clients. In my new book, I begin by saying how much I learned from these wonderful people. And then I writing and editing books is an opportunity for me to meet people. So I've sold about 3 million books. I feel very, very, very fortunate. So I've had a great opportunity, a great life. And uh, life is good. Life is good. Mm. 
Absolutely. Life is good. I, I love that. Um, I, I caught that several years ago. <laughs> you know, I caught that from you several years ago, that life is good, and life is indeed very, very good. <laughs> life is indeed very good. Yeah, so le let's, let me ask you, um, ca can you tell us, please, what, what got you attracted uh, into the world of executive coaching? Well, it's very interesting. It was very uh, almost random. There was nothing called executive coaching at that time. So mm -hmm. what happened is I am a pioneer in something called 360 degree feedback. So we developed this concept of customized 360 degree feedback and started giving leaders confidential feedback on how their scene is doing. One of my clients, the CEO of a big company, said, I have this young man working for us. Young, smart, dedicated, hardworking. Mm, full of he's energy. A, he's, a, he's a jerk. A mm. Jerk, mm. stubborn, opinionated. He said, it mm. would be worth a fortune to me if you could help me change this guy. I said, I like fortunes. Maybe I could change him. He said, mm. I doubt it. I said, maybe. He's, I don't know. Then I had an mm. idea. I said, I will work with him for one year. If he gets better, pay me. If he does not get mm. better, it's free. What did the CEO wow. say? Sold. There was nothing called coaching. Wow. I made this up. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, I mean, that experience, it was, um, it, it was as a result of, um, it, let's, let's call this person a manager uh, who had behavioral issue, right? Yeah. Well, you know, can you ask the question again, please? Yes, I, I was asking, so based on this illustration, so that's how you started the world of uh, coaching, what you are doing right, uh, I mean, today. Yeah, oh, yes, that was, uh, and that was, oh, oh that was uh, 43 years ago. That was a long time ago. A yeah. long time ago. Wow, wow, Yeah. wow. So what has been the biggest lesson uh, that you have learned from this amazing career as a coach? My greatest lesson came from one of my wonderful clients, my friend, Alan Mulally. Now, mm. I must put this in context. Alan was the CEO of Boeing Commercial Aircraft. He went to mm. Ford. The stock was valued at $1.01. And he left eight years later, the stock was $18.40. The stock went up 1,837% while he was the CEO. And mm. he had a 97% approval rating from every employee in a union company. He was ranked CEO of the year in the United States and in Fortune wow. Magazine, number three greatest leader in the whole world behind the Pope and Angela Merkel at the time. So I talked to my friend, Alan, and I said, Alan, he's, by the way, he's a great friend. I just heard from him this morning. I said, hmm. Alan, of all the people I coached, I spent the least amount of time coaching you. You were fantastic to start with and you improved the most. Hmm. And then I said, Alan, the client I spent the most amount of time with didn't improve at all and I didn't get paid. I made a chart on one dimension. It was called time spent with the executive coach, Marshall Wellsmith. The other dimension was called improvement. I hmm. said, Alan, there's a negative correlation between spending time with me and getting better. I'm getting I better. Said, I said, Alan, the way this chart looks, had you never met me, you would be better yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked my friend, Alan, what should I learn about coaching from you? He taught hmm. me a lesson that changed my life. Hmm. He said, Mar Marshall, your biggest challenge as a coach is one thing, customer selection. If you hmm. pick hardworking, dedicated, great people, your coaching process will always work. Hmm. If you pick people who don't care, your coaching process will never work. And then he Whoa. said, never make coaching about yourself and your own ego and how smart you think you are. Hmm. Make it about the great people you coach, you coach. how great they are. It's not about uh -huh. you, it's about them. That changed my life. And by the way, I'm so proud of it. My new book, The Earned Life, uh -huh. if you look at the endorsement page, it begins uh -huh. by saying, in my 50-year career as an executive educator and coach, I've been blessed with working with many of the greatest leaders in the world. In uh -huh. theory, I'm supposed to teach them. In practice, uh -huh. I've learned far more from them than they uh -huh. have learned from me. From, so, from you. Why am I always ranked number one coach? Hmm. I have the best clients. Wow. Anybody so, would look like a good coach if you manage the great people I do. Hmm. 
<laughs> awesome. So, so it, it, it's not about your coaching approach, but it's about the, the clients. A little bit. It's about the way my, my coaching approach only works with great clients. The great clients. Yeah, wrong clients, waste of time. Wow. So, so let, let me, that, that takes me to ask you a question. Um, well, have let, you me seen ask, some... let, me, let me ask you a question first. Okay. I'm going to see if you deeply understand what I just said. Are you ready? All right. All right. Very ready. Have you ever attempted to change the behavior of a wife, friend, or partner who had no interest in changing before? Have you tried that before? Yes, but it wasn't successful. Have you ever tried to change the behavior of mommy or daddy who did not want to change? Have you tried that <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> Bad idea. I was teaching my class at Dartmouth. A woman raised her hand. I said, are you trying to change mommy or daddy? She said, daddy. I said, what is daddy's problem? She said, daddy does not have a health lifestyle. I asked her, how old is daddy? She said, 94 years old. Yes, <laughs> old. <laughs> I said, leave the old boy alone. He's <laughs> you, you want to smoke a cigarette, old man? Smoke too. Who cares, right? So, I know. Coaching. Lesson for yeah. coaches. If hmm. they don't care, don't waste your hmm. time. Hmm. Work with if people they don't, who care. Don't waste your time. Hmm. Yeah. They won't get better. Hmm. And hmm. you'll get blamed. So... Let's let's. I, I want us to because I, I work as a as an organizational development um, consultant to to several organizations. Sure. And one of the things that uh, we're trying to propagate here in Nigeria is the uh, idea around coaching. Good. So I'd like to ask you: Do you feel that every organization in the world now understand the need for coaching? No. Uh, this is still a relatively new concept. It's becoming more and more popular, yet it's pretty new. So it only became popular in the United States predominantly in the last 20 years. Hmm. So there's still so much to do, right? Yes. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So le le let's look at this. Um, is it possible to uh, to rise to the rank uh, of a top executive without having a mentor, um, you know, without having a coach or a mentor uh, or going through a form of coaching? Uh, of course it's possible because up until 20 years ago, nobody had a coach and somebody always rise to the top, right? Rise to the, to the top. Hmm. Now, the question of coaching is not, do you have to have a coach to survive? The question of coaching is, do you have to have a coach to get better? Hmm. And you see, everyone I coach is already successful before I meet them. They're hmm. all the CEOs or could be CEOs of great companies. One thing hmm. I'm proud of is they're trying to get better. I'm not, hmm. they don't hire me because they're losers. They're hmm. already CEOs. They're already leaders. leaders. They're winners, hmm. not losers. How many hmm. of the top 10 tennis players have a coach? 10. Hmm. Now, why hmm. do they have a coach? They want to hmm. get better. Hmm. Why, why do my clients have a coach? They want to get better. Hmm. 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 So, so but, but have you seen anyone, maybe from your list of clients, someone you were trying to uh, coach, most especially um, when it comes to the, that behavioral change? Yeah. And the person seems not to, over the period of time, the, the person seems not to be changing. Do you have a, 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 a particular example that you want to, that you like to, to, to discuss? Yeah, yeah the, uh, every time as a coach I failed, the problem is always the same. My own mm. ego. My mm. ego. I can't save people. And what I've mm. learned is if people don't care and they don't want to change, goodbye. Fire mm. them. I just don't work with them. You fire them. <laughs> of course. Look, I don't get paid if they don't get better. Why waste you my time? You don't get paid if you don't get if they don't get better. So that's like pay pay for pay, pay for results. That is exactly like pay for results. 
pay for results. Wow. This is a unique model, Masha. How has it worked? How has it worked for you? Um, you don't get paid if you didn't, if they don't get better. Yeah. How's it work for me? Yes. Very, very simple. I get paid at the end. If they get better, I get paid. They don't get better. It's all free. Wow. Wow. This is this is unique. L let's talk about your. Uh, your latest book, which is which is called The End Life. What does it mean to live an end life? I mean, <laughs> when I saw the book, um, I have the book with me. Um, so it's end life. What, what does it mean to live an end life? Uh, we are living an earned life when the choices, risks, and effort we make in each moment align with an overarching purpose in our lives regardless of the eventual outcome. And the key point there is regardless of the outcome. Hmm. Living an earned life doesn't mean you make money. Hmm. It means you're living a life that's optimi uh, optimizing three things. One, what is your aspiration in life? What hmm. is your higher purpose in life? Why are hmm. we here? And our aspiration has no timeline. Our inspiration hmm. goes on. Second, we have our ambitions. That's our achievements. What am I trying to achieve? And our achievements have a fixed time target. And then we have our actions. What am I doing day to day? And as we go through life, very important, we align these three things. We align our big aspirations, our achievements, and our actions. Our ancestors, your ancestors, and my ancestors were very poor people. They didn't have money. They lived very simple lives. And hmm. they lived in what's called the action phase. They lived day to day. Most humans hmm. live day to day. Most human beings just live day to day lives. They're not bad people. They just do what's in front of them. Some hmm. people live in their head. Some people are lost in this action phase. Some are lost in the aspiration phase. They live in their heads. They think lofty ideas. They may not do much, but they have lots hmm. of dreams. Hmm. The people I coach and the people listening to us right now have neither one of those problems. Hmm. The people who or listening to this call tend to get addicted to results and addicted to achievement. Hmm. And they fall into a classic trap. After I achieve this, everything will be okay. Hmm. I'll be good after I achieve something. When I get the money status, BMW car, when I get the promotion, when I become successful, everything's hmm. going to be different. My life will hmm. always be fine. <clears throat> this hmm. addiction to results is hopeless. Here's why. Mm. One mm. of my clients is named Albert Berla. Albert mm. is the CEO of Pfizer. A few months ago, I asked Albert, how was your year last year? He said, oh, what a good year. Mm. Came up with mm. a vaccine. Very good. Mm. Uh, uh, new products, company profit, all-time high. Uh, mm. oh, and then uh, employee engagement, all-time high. Stock value, all-time mm. high. Uh, he was CEO of the year. Oh, very good. So I said to him, Albert, what is your biggest challenge? He said, hmm. I have a huge challenge. Next year. Next hmm. year. If his value as a human being is he has to achieve better results than last year. Than last year. Hmm. It's not going to happen. Hmm. Unless there's another pandemic, it's not going to happen. Hmm. We don't want it to happen. Michael hmm. Phelps. The swimmer won 25 gold medals. What did he think of doing after winning his 25th medal? Killing himself. Hmm. When we become addicted to achievement and results, we cannot win this game. Here's why. Hmm. One, you don't control everything. Albert doesn't hmm. control COVID. You don't control everything. Exactly. And the results are often out of our control. And two, what happens after we achieve the results? How much hmm. long-term satisfaction does that bring us? Satisfaction. Hmm. A day, hmm. a week, a month, then what hmm. happens? We need more results and more and more and more. More and results. Hmm. The term for this is called the hungry ghost. The hungry, hungry ghost. ghost. Always eating and never hmm. full. Hmm. So, but, but people feel uh, it, it's valid, uh, or let, let me put it this way. It's valid for people to want to feel happiness, most especially when uh, they recorded one level of success, uh, yeah, to to another on and on like that. 
is it out of place for people to um, aspire more uh, in, in, in life? It's good for people to try to achieve. Here's the point. One of the great people that I worked with, this book was inspired by 60 great leaders mm. that I spent 600 hours with over COVID. My friend Mark Timpson and I, 600 hours with these people. And the names of these people are not a secret. The names are in the book, uh, right? In the book, yes. Amazing people. Mm. One of the people's name is Safi Bacall. He's a scientist. Another one is Curtis Martin, one of the greatest football players in the history of the America. Hmm. And Safi said, I've learned a great lesson from Curtis. He said, I used to believe that happiness was a dependent variable based upon achievement. And if I achieved hmm. a little more, I would be happy. I will be happy, yes. Hmm. He said, I realize happiness and achievement are independent variables. variables. Achieve hmm. to achieve. Achievement is good. Be happy hmm. to be happy. Be happy is good. Hmm. These are hmm. independent, though. Hmm. I said, Safi, I'm so glad you realized this. Why? You already have a PhD in physics from Stanford. Hmm. You've already started four companies. You've made millions and millions of dollars. dollars. Hmm. You've written a New York Times bestselling book, and you've consulted hmm. the presidents. Safi, hmm. if that is not enough achievement to make you happy, how hmm. much do you have to have? <laughs> you have to have. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> How much do you have to have if that's to not have. enough? Hmm. You see what I mean? Hmm. We'll always be chasing for more. For more. Hmm. Achievement is good. Achieve to achieve. Happiness hmm. is good. Be hmm. happy to be happy. Never believe hmm. results or achievement will make you happy. Hmm. Awesome. Now, awesome. let me give you as an example. Um, okay, I'm going to okay. ask you a question. How old are you? I'm in my early 40s. Uh, good. Well, give me a number. 40 what? 42. You're 42. Yes. Now, you may, you may look at me and think, oh, what a lucky mm. old man. Look at that lucky guy. <laughs> he's, made, he's made millions and millions of dollars. He's oh, written dollars. so many best-selling books. He's a famous <laughs> coach. Look at him. Mm. Lucky, lucky, lucky old man. I wish I were him. Mm. I'm going to help you. You have something I do not have. Do you know what that's called? Hmm. 31 years. Hmm. Do you want you want all my books? Hmm. You give me the 31 years, you can have <laughs> you can have the book. All, all the books. Wow. <laughs> Here's the point. Don't look at other people and think I wish I were them. Them. Hmm. Hmm. You have something I do not have. 31 hmm. years. Yes. Hmm. Enjoy the 31 years. Hmm. Wow. Wow. So I, I know you always refer to certain people um, as your heroes. I mean, I've read. <laughs> what are those significant things that these heroes give to you, Marshall? I'm going to try to tell you a story without crying, but hmm. I may fail. <laughs> I just saw one of what, my what are these heroes? What are these heroes? Let's let's know these heroes. Well, one of my greatest heroes I saw last week. Her name is Frances Hesselbein. Oh, Peter Francis. Drucker said, Yeah, the greatest oh. leader he's ever met. She's been a mentor and a hero to me. She's dying. Oh. And I saw her last week, right before she's died. And I go to see her, and she's on her deathbed. Mm. I thought she would be unconscious. She's barely able to talk. Mm. She could barely open her eyes. My friend mm. said, Francis Marshall is here. She opened her eyes, smiled. Mm. She talked to me for 20 minutes. Wow. She said, I feel great. She was so positive. Mm. For 20 minutes, she was focused mm. on only one thing, me. Mm. Me. It wasn't mm. about her. Hmm. That's, I've I knew I have known her for, forty five years. I have wow. never seen her be angry, negative, upset. Always positive. Always trying to be forward. Even on her deathbed, while she's dying, hmm. twenty minutes, hmm. 
Showtime. Hmm. That's her. Such a great heart. Such a great, such a wonderful heart. Hmm. Wow. So, okay. a great hero. Th that's Francis. Yeah, Ooh. wonderful person. Hmm. And, you know, just a great leader. And my hmm. friend Alan, same thing. Wonderful person, a great leader. They're very kind to nice people. That doesn't mean they cannot be tough. Hmm. As a leader, you have to be able to make decisions. So hmm. my friend Alan always said, I have a heart of gold and a backbone, a backbone of titanium. Same as Francis. Hmm. Heart of gold, backbone of titanium. You've got to do what's right. Sometimes you're not popular, yet you have a heart of gold. Hmm. Well, Alan, uh, Francis, very unique mentors to you, heroes to you. Yes. Um, Jim Kim. Jim Kim, Jim Kim. saved hmm. 20 million lives. When he ran Partners in Health, he saved about 20 million lives. And in, in the AIDS pandemic in Africa, he saved millions and millions of people. Just a great person. So I'm so hmm. honored to even know these people. Hmm. Wow. So let's talk about uh, leadership in the world that we are in, the digital world that we are in right now. Um, do you feel organizations uh, have to make provisions for um, mentors, um, either within the four walls of the organization or, or get connected with them virtually? Yeah, I think more and more things are going to be virtual. This conversation is virtual. Hmm. And the advantage of virtual is you and I can talk. I mean, hmm. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're in Lagos, Nigeria. We can talk. talk. Well, it's a hmm. great thing. We couldn't talk. For us to talk in person requires a whole lot of work. For us to hmm. talk virtually is not bad. So most of my coaching is virtual. Hmm. I mean, every week over COVID, I worked with these 60 people. We did six sessions each weekend, you know, and they went to different groups. And obviously, it was all virtual. These are people from around the world. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just like everything else in life, it takes a while to learn how to use it. Hmm. And it takes more discipline, by the way. It's hmm. hard for the employees to be disciplined virtually be when disciplined. nobody's looking at you. It's very hard for everybody. It's hmm. much easier to be disciplined if your boss is standing there. Hmm. It's harder if hmm. no one is standing there. Hmm. 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 I, 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 I understand. So let, 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 let's look at this. So um, about senior leaders uh, who get almost uh, no real feedback. Uh, you know, senior leaders who don't get feedback. Uh, how, how, how do you, uh, have you come, at, let, let me put it this way, have you come across a senior leader uh, who doesn't get real feedback? Right. Uh, so, someone like that, how do you think they can ever improve from well, I, I negative behavior? Hmm. I encourage people to get confidential feedback. And if the coworkers believe the feedback is confidential, they tend to tell the truth. I mean, I work in Saudi Arabia all the time, right? Hmm. They get confidential feedback. I, I'm coaching people to report to the crown prince. They get confidential feedback. And this is Saudi Arabia. There's no country this doesn't work. It's just you can't expect people to give leaders honest face-to-face -face feedback. That's very naive yeah. to even expect. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Look at the history of the world. Uh, let's see. One of our ancestors leaders the truth. Our other ancestors smiled and went along. Which one yeah. lived? Which one of these ancestors lived? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that one hmm. lived. How about that? Hmm. <laughs> that hmm. one died. I know. Yeah, I know. We have a very deep, feedback. Hmm. Yeah, we have a very deep cultural history of don't mess with people in power. And, you know, it, uh, that's why I like confidential feedback. I don't hmm. expect people to give honest face to face feedback to leaders. Hmm. Hmm. I, I think that's kind of naive to expect. Hmm. 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 Yeah, confidential, confidential feedback. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to quickly process this uh, because most of the time when I take a course on leadership, 
uh, feedback happens to be one uh, one key element of feedback, uh, yeah, one yeah. key element of, of, of leadership. So now, uh, well, you are saying that it, it has to be confidential. Well, I, the feedback from down up tends yes. to be, I didn't say it has to be. It's just for me as a coach, better to be confidential. Confidential. Hmm. Also, I ask leaders then after they get feedback, the feedback hmm. is confidential. Then they do feed forward. And the feed forward is quite different. They don't ask for feedback. They ask for ideas for the future. So if hmm. I'm the leader, let's assume my feedback says I don't listen well. I do not come back and ask for more feedback. I tell people, do not do that. Feed hmm. forward. Feed forward. Say, so, so how does it work? How does feed forward work? Very simple. I would say, hello, Mr. Coworker. I received hmm. this confidential feedback. Here is what I feel good about. Here's one hmm. thing I want to improve. I want to be a better listener. I'm hmm. not going to ask you for more feedback about the past. Hmm. I can't change the past anyway. I'm hmm. going to ask you for ideas for the future. So if you had to have ideas for the future to help me be a better listener, what might they be? Everyone can give ideas for the future and they don't mm. feel bad. Mm. That's why you're not mm. putting me down. People love feed forward. I, I mm. use it all around the world. There's no mm. country it doesn't work. Mm. Feed forward. <laughs> so rather than feedback, now is the time to do feed forward. And, and have you seen the, the result future. of this very well? The positive result of this? Oh, I, if you've... If your listeners would like to read a research study, I did a study called Leadership as a Context Sport. Send me an email, marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com. I'll send them a copy of it. And it's research from 86,000 people around the world. So have I seen the results? Yes. Have I documented the results? Yes. Is it published? Yes. yes. By the way, from thousands and thousands of people. Does it work? Yes. Mm. By the way, it doesn't kind of work or sort of work. It works. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, leadership is is um, is a great concept, um, and of course, in organizations, we talk about leadership um, as being everyone's business um, in in an organization. Um, going by that, when it comes to the decision making, uh, should it also be collective? You know, because now we are talking about um, collaborative leadership. Um, moving away from the command and control style of leadership. Uh, so now, should decision also be collective? Should it be collective, uh, you know, so that um, even people that we are leading, they can take decision? It, it depends. Mm. It, de it depends upon who has the knowledge to make the decision. The decision. Mm. I mean, you know, and ultimately leaders have to be responsible. That's what they get paid for. Hmm. No leader goes to the people and say, I have no responsibility. You decide and do whatever you want. You That's not real. You want. <laughs> That's not real. No, leaders hmm. are responsible people and have to be willing to make decisions. Hmm. Now, they may get input and lots of involvement before making the decision. They are still hmm. responsible for the final decision, though. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Let, let, let's just quickly, in a few minutes, Marshall, Let's just quickly check um, a few questions that people are asking. So uh, Elijah today here says that, thanks Marshall for sharing this deep truth. A few questions. So how do you recognize great clients when they approach you for coaching? And for what value is coaching a great person rather than inspiring those who have, no, who have not caught a glimpse of their greatness? How do you balance achievement of result and happiness without being tempted to be a mediocre? Would, would you like to... <laughs> to, yeah, to... Let, so if you can... Uh, I can't see because it's blocking the screen, but let me answer oh. one question at a time. Hmm. Our leadership okay. coaching process works with leaders at any level. So hmm. you don't have to be a CEO or a famous person. It works at any level. For example, it works as a human being. Uh, get in the habit of asking, how can I be a better husband or wife? Feed forward, get ideas, listen, follow up, try to improve. This doesn't just work for high level leaders. It works for anyone. The people I coach just tend to be high level leaders. That's number one. And number two, look, achieve happiness and meaning to achieve happiness and meaning. 
as you journey mm. through life, the key is, am I doing, am I trying to achieve in a way that's important to me that I mm. feel is meaningful? And am I to, and am I enjoying the journey of life? If the answer mm. is yes, I like this process. I'm enjoying the journey of life. I'm achieving things. And these things are, are meaningful to me. You just won the game of life. Hmm. At any level, that's it. Hmm. Hmm. So the second part of his question is that, um, how do you recognize great clients? Oh, yes. I recognize great clients. Very simple question. To me, are they willing to do the work? If my clients are willing to do the work, they get better. If they're not willing to do the work, they don't. They do not get better because of me. They talk to people, they follow up, and they work. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had a great quote. Nobody got muscles by watching hmm. me lift weights. They have to lift hmm. the weights. Hmm. They have to do the work. They don't get better because they listen to me. They don't hmm. get better because they read a book. They get better because they talk to people. They follow up, and they work hard at getting better day after day. Just like hmm. the great tennis player gets better. Why? They practice over and over and over again, thousands of times. That's why they're great. They don't get better because they read a book. You have to work. Hmm. Hmm. They don't get better because they read the book. So I, I have a question here. I mean, we'll take just one, two more questions, then we, we are done. Someone sent a question to me in my in my mailbox now. Uh, it says that uh, from your book, The End Life, uh, you talked about four cognitive and emotional qualities. Okay. Yes, that people needed in order to be successful. Uh, now, can these qualities be pushed by mentors to mentee, or are they inherent uh, attributes? The mentor can help the mentee who wants to get better. Hmm. The mentor cannot make the mentee do the work. Do the work. Hmm. It, the, if, if the mentee wants to learn, if the mentee hmm. is dedicated, the mentor can help them. If hmm. the mentee doesn't care, nothing I teach works. Hmm. You see, I'm not in the religious conversion business. Hmm. No. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a savior here. I'm, coach. I'm not a savior. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, someone says here that um, uh, can people live an end life without someone guiding them through it? Uh, Is it possible? I'll speak for myself. I, I have help every day. You have, have you, you call me every day. Why? Oh, every you have day. someone that calls you every day for 25 years. Do, to do what? Let, let, let's hear from, let's let's get to know more about that, Marshall. Well, For 25 look, I, years. I suggest this daily question process. You write down a series of questions that represent what's most important in your life. If you'd like to know more about it, send me an email, marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com. I can send you an article about it. Then every day you fill this questionnaire out and it talks about how you did. And at the week, at the end of the week, you get a report card. I'm going to warn all of you in advance, the report card at the end of the week is not as beautiful as a corporate values plaque up on a wall. Half the mm. people that start doing this quit in two weeks. It takes mm. three minutes a day. It costs nothing. It's going to help you get better at almost anything. Half the people quit in two weeks. Why? It's hard. It's painful to look in the mirror. Why do I have someone call me up on the phone every day for 25 years to make sure I do this? Are you ready? My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I got ranked the number one executive coach and leadership thinker in the whole world. I have someone call me on the phone every day to help me. Why? I am too cowardly to do any of this stuff by myself. I am too undisciplined to do any of this stuff by myself. I need help. And it's okay. It's okay I need help. We all need help. We need help. Look at the people I coach. They need help. If they didn't need help, why did they hire me? I need help. I'm no better than the people I coach. In fact, I need lots of help. Hmm. I need daily help. Hmm. Wow. So this person has some set of questions that you have distilled. So I wrote, uh, I wrote the questions, and they just make sure that I fill out the form every day. For 25 years? Yep. 25 years. Without, 
without <laughs> I need Masha, help. this, this I need is help. change. By the way, let me help you. How about I'll let willpower nonsense? Yeah, willpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Will, willpower. Blah, 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 hmm. blah, blah. Yeah, hmm. Look, I'm sure there are many things in your life you've been telling yourself you're going to do for 20 years and you haven't Absolutely. done. Is that correct? Absolutely. And you Absolutely. know what? If you haven't done it in 20 years, you're not going to do it. Raise your right hand. You know what you say? I need help. Repeat after I need me. Help. I, and, it's, <laughs> and it's okay. And it's okay. They say it's okay. It's okay. Don't wow. be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to need help. Don't be ashamed. Hmm. No, I need so, help. So, so you ask for this help every day. I need hmm. lots of help. I need hmm. lots of help. Twyla Tharp is probably the greatest choreographer and dancer in history. She's had the same personal trainer every day for 27 years. Why? She needs help. She won't do it by herself. Hmm. She's smart. That's why she looks good. Hmm. Why does every Hollywood star have a personal trainer? Why? They won't hmm. do it by themselves. They need hmm. help. Yeah, once we get over this silly, macho, I can do everything on my own nonsense, oh, life oh. is better. Hmm. By the way, people I coach, if they could do everything on their own with no help, why do they hire me? I hire you. Hmm. They need help. Hmm. <laughs> why does the world's greatest tennis player have coaches? He needs help. No, they need help. Hmm. We all need hmm. help. Hmm. Is there anybody out there who does not need help? Hmm. It's not ready to develop. Hmm. We can all do hmm. better. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. This is interesting, Masha. This is interesting. Hmm. Uh, let, let's let's look at this, please. Um, Obafemi is asking a question, saying that. Masha, being kind is not the same as weakness in the corporate world, right? How about assertiveness versus using tact to oh, achieve let, objectives? Let me give you a great way to deal with this, okay? I'm going to teach you what Peter Drucker taught me. In life, our mission is to make a positive difference, not to prove we're smart and not to prove we're right, number one. Hmm. Number two, every decision is made by the person who has the power to make the decision. Make peace with that. Now, I'm going to talk hmm. about two things leading people when you don't have power and leading people when you do have power. And then I'm going to answer the question. If I mm. don't have power and you have the power to make the decision, Peter Drucker said, the decision maker is the customer. I have to treat you like a customer. I sell what I sell. I can change what I can change. If you sell it, you sell it. If you can't sell it, you make peace and let it go. Sell what you mm. can sell. Now, back to this good question. If I'm the leader, I get to make the decision. Hmm. Well, all I have to say is, Mr. Direct Report, I respect you. I've listened hmm. to you. You want to hmm. do X for the following reasons, which you have explained. Hmm. And I've thought about it. And in this case, I want to do Y for the following reasons. And here they are. Let's say hmm. the Direct Report says, boss, I disagree. He hmm. said, well, you know, normally I understand. And many times I do agree with you. In this case, I still want to do this. The person says, boss, I think you're wrong. You know what you can say? you know what? I might be wrong. And hmm. if I'm not wrong this time, guess what? I'm going to be wrong sometime. I respect hmm. you. I've listened to you. I've made a decision. Here's the decision. Let's go make it work. Hmm. So you see, you can be very assertive without being nasty. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow, this is this is this is very profound. Um, hmm. Yeah, same question. Some questions. Thanks, Marsha. Very valid thought around how your achievements do not give true satisfaction, and it's great to hear it from a coach like you. It just right. cuts to the art of organizational politics of bitterness uh, for personal gain. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I, very well said. And it's very important to realize why do we all believe these things will make us happy? Why? There is hmm. an art form, the great art form of the West, which now is pervasive around the world. I'll bet hmm. you hurt 
I bet you've seen this drama hundreds, thousands of times. It's always the same. The art form goes like this. There is a person. Oh, the person is sad. Ooh, they spend mm. money. Ooh, they buy a product and they become happy. This is called a commercial, a commercial. Mm. Have you ever seen one of these commercials before? How many thousands of times have you seen this over and over and over? The same message. You will be happy when, when you mm. buy the product, when you get this, when you get this. No, you mm. won't. Happiness mm. never comes from out there. Mm. Happiness only comes from one place. Mm. In it's, here. It's, it's from here. Inside, mm. not the outside. Mm. Wow. So all the uh, extrinsic uh, pursuits uh, won't give us the happiness that we're looking for. In the short term, not in the long term. Hmm. Now, making money is good for making money. It's good. Hmm. For making money. Making money won't make you happy. Studies have been hmm. done on this. Once your income goes beyond a middle class level, there's almost no relationship between money and happiness. Many rich hmm. people are happy. Many rich people are miserable. Hmm. A third of the people I coach are billionaires. Hmm. If money would make you happy, they would all dance off the ceiling every day. Hmm. 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 Yeah. So, so before we um, wrap up this conversation, Marshall, um, you, you, in your book, the um, what got you here won't get you there. Uh, there are actually 20 uh, habits that you identified about some leaders. Uh, this habit, are they, which of them are so, uh, have you seen in all organizational leaders well, that you know that there's nothing they put, at all it, it put across all, all. almost um, all organizations? Let me give you the most common. Okay. Mm. I was interviewed in the Harvard Business Review and said, what is the most common problem of all the great people you coach? My answer, winning too much. What is this? Mean? Winning too much. Too much. If it's important, we want to win. Meaningful, win. Critical, win. Trivial, win. Mm. And not worth it, we want to win anyway. Winners mm. love winning. It's mm. hard for winners not to stop winning. I'm going to give you a case study and I will bet you fail. Are you ready? You want mm, to go yes. to dinner at restaurant X. Your wife or partner wants to go to dinner at restaurant Y. You have an argument. Mm. You go to Y. Mm. The food mm. tastes terrible. The service is awful. Option A, critique mm. the food. Point out our partner was wrong. This mistake mm. could have been avoided if you listened to mm. me, me, me. Me, me, option, me. me. Mm. Option B, option B. Shut mm. up. Shut up. Eat mm. the food. Try to enjoy it and have a nice night. What would I do? What should I do? Almost all my clients, what would I do? Critique the food. What should I do? Shut up. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't always try to win. A second case study. You have a hard day at work. You come home. Your wife hmm. or partner or husband is there. The other person says, I had a hard day. We say, you had a hard day. You had a hard hmm. day. Do you have any idea what I had to put up with today? We're so competitive. We try to prove we're more miserable than the people we live with. I gave hmm. this example to my class at the Dartmouth Tuck School. A young man raised hmm. his hand. He said, I did that last week. I asked him, what hmm. happened? He said, hmm. my wife looked at me and said, honey, you just hmm. think you have had a hard day. It hmm. is not over. <laughs> hmm. 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 So winning too much. Is there any other one that is so... Um, Come on. Number two, adding too much value. I'm adding young, too much value. I'm young, smart, enthusiastic. I come to you with an idea. You think mm. it's a great idea. Rather than just saying great idea, we tend to say, oh, that's a nice idea. Why don't you add this to it? The mm. problem is the quality of the idea may go up 5%. My commitment mm. to execute this idea may go down 50%. It's no mm. longer my idea, boss. Now it's your idea. Hmm. One of the great leaders I coached is named J.P. Garnier. J.P. was the CEO of GlaxoSmithKline. I said, hmm. what did you learn about leadership as the CEO of this huge company? He said, I've learned a very hard lesson. And every hmm. time people get promoted, this lesson is more real. 
he said, my suggestions become orders. My suggestions. Hmm. Now, he said, if they're smart, they're orders. If they're stupid, they're orders. If I want hmm. them to be orders, they are orders. If I do not want them to be orders, they're orders anyway. Hmm. My suggestions become orders. For nine hmm. years, I trained the admirals in the United States Navy. What's the first thing I teach them? You get that star? Your suggestions hmm. become orders. Admirals don't make suggestions. Hmm. An admiral makes a suggestion. What do people say? Yes, sir. That suggestion hmm. is an order. I asked JP, what did you learn from me when I was your coach that helped you the most? He said, you taught me one lesson that helped me so much be a better leader and have a happier life. I said, what hmm. was the one lesson? He said, before I speak, breathe. Hmm. And ask myself <laughs> one question. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Worth Is it, it worth it? Now, hmm. let me ask you, have you ever got into a angry argument with someone you love when you had sure. a need to win and prove they sure. were wrong on a minor sure. unimportant topic hmm. not worth it hmm. not hmm. worth it proving mommy hmm. and daddy are wrong uh, not worth it not Brief. worth it <laughs> Brief. Brief. is it worth it not am i right is it worth it hmm. Hmm. Wow, this is this is great. Someone is asking here that uh, Marshall, what what exactly are you working on now? Um, someone asked here that what gave birth to the one hundred coaches that I've seen. Um, I, I saw when you started one hundred coaches, but what gave birth to that idea? Oh, the hundred coaches has been amazing. I went to a program called Design the Life You Love, sponsored by Aisha Brussel. Aisha, yeah, Aisha is my next guest. Oh, she's a wonderful woman. Then uh, Aisha asked me, who are my heroes? I mentioned my heroes. She said, you should be more like your heroes. I decided to adopt 15 people, teach them all I know for free. And the only price is when they got old, they had to do the same thing. So hmm. I make a little selfie video and put it on LinkedIn. Well, I think 100 people would apply and I'll adopt 15, hmm. but I was wrong. So far, 18,000 people have applied and wow. we've adopted. Now there's about 370 in the group and it's called the 100 wow. Coaches. It's an amazing group. And the, the, the whole philosophy is you just give things to people. Anyone who asks for help, you try to help them and it's hmm. feed forward. If they want it, great. If they don't want it, it's okay. And there's no expectation of pay or hmm. that they will do something for you. The only expectation is to help someone else. To help someone else. So, so like a chain of yeah. chain of uh, helpers. <laughs> Pay it forward. Yeah. Oh, awesome. 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 So what... Oops, you just froze. Hello, hello, hello. You are frozen on my end. I'm going to go out and in to see if I can get back in.
Hello. Just call me back. Hello. Yes. Thank you. We got disconnected. <laughs> yeah. Now, why don't you let me finish with my best coaching advice in the world? Hmm. Are you ready? Yes, very ready. Okay, because our hour is about up. So I'll finish with my best coaching advice. Okay, here it is for everyone listening. Breathe. Ah, take a deep breath. Imagine that you're 95 years old and you're just getting ready to die. Here comes your last <laughs> breath. Before you take the last breath, you're given a beautiful gift. The ability to go back in time and talk to the person who's listening to me right now. <laughs> the ability to help that person be a better leader, even more important, have a better life. What <laughs> advice would that wise old person who knows what mattered in life and what didn't and what was important and what wasn't, what advice would that wise old person have for the person that's listening to me right now? Hmm. Whatever you're thinking now, do that. In terms hmm. of a performance appraisal, that's the only one that matters. Hmm. Some friends of mine interviewed old folks who were dying, got to ask this question. What advice would you have? On the personal hmm. side, three themes. Theme number one, be happy now. Not be next happy week. Now. Hmm. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Be happy now. Hmm. Don't get so wrapped up chasing what you do not have that you cannot hmm. see what you do have. Hmm. Number two, friends and family. Never get so busy climbing the ladder of success you forget the people that love you. Hmm. And number three, if you have a dream, go for it. Because if you don't go out for when you're 42, you may not when you're 52 and you will not when you're 82. Hmm. Business advice isn't much different. Number one, life is short. Have fun. Mm. Two, do whatever you can do to help people. The main mm. reason to help people is nothing to do with money or status or getting ahead. The main reason to help people is much deeper. The 95 year old you will be proud of you because you did and disappointed if you don't. Mm. And the final advice is go for it. The world's mm. changing, the industries are changing. Do what you think is right. You may not win, but at least you tried. Old mm. people, we almost never regret the risk we take and fail. Mm. We almost always regret the risk we fail to take. Hmm. And finally, hmm. what's, my mission is quite simple. My mission is, I hope someone listening to us today has just a little better life based on something that we said. Hmm. If that happens, it's a good day for me. It's a good day. It's a wow. Good day. Awesome. This is amazing. This is amazing, Marshall. Thank you so much. Thank you. you you've been a blessing to me, I must say. Uh, most of the time, remember you were the one who facilitated uh, my conversation with Dave Ulrich, with um, um, Sally Elgerson, and a quite number of people like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much, Masha. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, so everyone, that's the end of the show today. Hope to connect with you some other time. Thank you. Cheers.